Gallagher was one of the most successful stand-up comedians of the 1980s with a string of cable specials and sell-out live performances all across the United States. But these last few years, he's been more known as a bitter old man who tells racist jokes. What the hell happened? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. What do you say, gang? Here are five not so smashing things about Gallagher. Number one, he didn't handle the downside of his career very well. From 1980 to 1987, Gallagher starred in a total of 10 comedy specials for Showtime. His peak was probably 1983 when he released two of his most popular and best shows, Stuck in the 60s and The Maddest. The latter is the one that's probably most familiar to general audiences. It's the one with the giant couch. Then came the slow but inevitable decline. In the 1990s, Gallagher produced only three specials, none of which approached the popularity of his earlier stuff. Since then, he's been largely absent from TV, though he's continued to tour and perform for live audiences. It was during this late period that people who had been fans of Gallagher in the old days started to notice something different about him. In his stage act and during interviews, he came across as hostile and resentful. He would ask bitterly why Jay Leno and David Letterman were hired to host talk shows, but not him. He would denigrate blacks, Mexicans, Jews, LGBTQ people, and other marginalized groups for the amusement of his predominantly white male audiences. In 2011, he walked out of an appearance on Mark Maron's WTF podcast after Maron challenged him on his use of such crudely offensive material. But the racist and homophobic jokes were only symptoms of a deeper problem that affected Gallagher's act after his popularity declined. Number two, he developed a palpable contempt for his audience. If you juxtapose Gallagher's earlier specials with his later ones, you might notice the same thing I did. His attitude toward his own audience has changed drastically. In the early 80s, he would speak of the audience and himself as being on the same team. He used the word we a lot. He would phrase the observations of everyday absurdity that accounted for much of his act so that they sounded like remarks shared between friends. He depicted himself and the people in the theater as the smart ones, the hip ones, as opposed to the rest of the dipshits running around out there without a clue. But by the early 90s, Gallagher had come to regard his audience as fools to be tricked and tormented. He delighted in splashing people in the front row with an unexpected spray of water. He called teenagers up on stage to belittle and embarrass them. Now he, and only he, was the smart one. And everyone else, especially the people who had paid to see him, were merely the fortunate beneficiaries of his genius. In other words, number three, he built his act around his own superiority. It's often said that comedy should punch up, not punch down. Gallagher doesn't seem to recognize the wisdom of that principle. These past few decades, he has done little else but punch down, and he has plenty of targets since he regards the rest of the world as being beneath him. A good example of this is his first comedy special of the 1990s, 1992's We Need a Hero. The premise of this show, such as it was, Gallagher specials were never models of elegant thematic structure, was that none of the supposed role models put forth by popular culture, entertainers, sports figures, politicians, etc., measured up. They were all liars, hypocrites, and phonies all except for Gallagher, who presented himself unironically as the hero we needed. To prove this, he flung remnants of smashed food into the faces of unsuspecting people in the front row, tricked a young man from the audience into squirting himself in the face with a water gun disguised as a microphone, and had a bodybuilder join him on stage so that Gallagher could show that he wasn't intimidated by the bigger man. Seriously, that's the whole bit. The big guy comes out, Gallagher makes fun of him for a few minutes, the big guy exits. 
What is the point of such a routine? Why would a comedian choose to include that bit in his act? Well, perhaps it's because, number four, he forgot how to write jokes. To be fair, I'm not sure Gallagher ever knew how to write a joke in the first place. Even in his earlier specials, most of his act consisted either of showing off goofy props that he'd made or making observations about things in everyday life that he found absurd or foolish. And if that second one sounds familiar, yes, that's what most stand-up comics do. But what separates a skilled comedian like Richard Pryor or George Carlin or Joan Rivers from a hack like Gallagher is that the good comics go beyond the superficial observation to get at a deeper insight about themselves, about us, about the human condition itself. Gallagher rarely bothered to explore beyond the, look at this, isn't this dumb, level. He did sometimes manage some clever wordplay, and his signature bit, the sledge originated as a spoof of infomercials, but eventually Gallagher abandoned even these fairly basic trappings of comedy in favor of ridiculing his audience and whacking shit with a big hammer just for the sake of it. One of his last TV specials, 1998's Messin' Up Texas, consists almost entirely of protracted preparation for the sledge routine. This from a guy who freely criticizes other comics for their supposed lack of discipline and craft. <laughs> if there was ever a comic who needed more discipline and craft, it's Gallagher. But those deficiencies aren't the only things that caused his popularity to wane. Most importantly of all, number five, he lacked a coherent point of view. Trying to critically examine the comedy of Gallagher is a little bit like trying to nail pudding to the wall, which Gallagher has probably done on stage, now that I think about it. The problem with digging into Gallagher's comedy is that you reach the center and find that nothing's there. There's not much technique beyond pointing and laughing at superficially silly things we take for granted. Hey, why do we call them buildings when we're already done building them? And nothing that allows us any degree of insight into Gallagher himself or how he views the world beyond all this stuff is ridiculous and look at how smart I am for realizing it. During his disastrous abbreviated 2011 interview with Mark Marin, Gallagher in the course of defending his use of racist homophobic material declares that a comedian is supposed to say whatever he has to say to get the people to laugh. And in that we may have the closest that we will ever find to a true insight into the man. Gallagher doesn't care what he says on stage, as long as it gets a laugh from his audience. How fittingly ironic that a man who has so frequently attacked the artistry of better, more successful comedians would finally reveal to one of those comedians how truly artless his own shtick has always been. The hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you found this one worth watching. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Steve Shives to become a patron of this channel. Thanks for watching.